Okay, let's go. Let's go to let's go to the the third session here. We did the first session yesterday, and today we've done the second session. This is the third session, and then we will we will close. Um, Lois, are you still there with me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Now the question is: When you begin to see signs that love is running away in your relationship, how do you handle it? Please, I want everybody to help me because there are people when they begin to see the signs, they want to fight, they want to kill, they want to quarrel. They did not used to have high blood pressure. Their their high blood goes up. Boom. Some people to the extent that they they pass out and they need to be rushed to the hospital. Sometimes a quarrel start and somebody will pass out. Somebody will slap somebody. Fight will begin. The children are forced to take sides. So please, how do you handle when you begin to see that you are neglected? When you begin to see all these different things that we have been talking about in terms of signs and more signs that the love is slipping away. Love is running away. What do you do? How, how do you handle it? Let's take one thing at a time. One thing at a time that we should, that in your own experience, you should have done or you did. How do we handle it? I'm not talking about when the person finally has left or both of you have separated or divorced each other. No, we will deal with that tomorrow. Tomorrow, Thursday. But today is, what do you do? What what you can somebody should tell me one thing, then let some other person give us another idea, then let somebody else give us another instruction until we've we've dealt with it. How do you deal with when flowers doesn't come anymore, chocolate doesn't come anymore, no more candy? You know? They don't they don't okay, come I anymore. Have to ask you about what's going on. You, 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 first of all, you have to have communication and understanding about one another. Mm-hmm. You know me, I know you. Some of the time. Okay. Everything stops going on. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to ask you what's going on. Okay. She said. I'm going to ask you. I, I'm going to even ask you if I'm sexy enough. I ain't sexy enough. What's going on? Okay. See what she's saying? She says she will be bold enough to come and ask the person, what is going on? Am I sexy enough? That is amazing. That's wonderful. That the courage and boldness to do this. I'm so I'm so proud of you that you can go there. I'm so proud of you. Now it sounds like you you are not done with with that. Can can you give us a little bit more? I don't know, Pat. I'm very romantic out Okay. Somebody else? Love. Somebody love. else? Love is special, and it's something like a bond. This is Pastor. I'm I'm not very easy to love. Okay. I'm really not, and um, because when I love, I love. Okay. You know, it makes it nice to be So she said she will ask questions. She will boldly confront the person gently to ask what is going on? Am I not sexy enough? What is it that I'm doing wrong? What is going on here? Next person, how are you going to handle when you see signs that love is slipping away, love is running away? What, what will you do? Romancing the person, if you are, you know, if you are romancing them, if you are fixing their favorite dinner, planning some time, some date time, but 
Uh, who, who is, please, that person that is speaking, do you have people around you that you should get away from because we are hearing sound of car and people talking behind you? No, there's nobody here. Okay. Yeah, who are those in a car? Please, please help us mute your phone. If you have people with you, mute your phone. When is your turn? You press star six and talk to us. Thank you. Okay, Leona, is that you talking to uh, talking to us? Yes. Okay, start again, start again. Tell us, how will you handle when you see such a thing? How do you, how do you want to handle it? The first thing you need to do is examine yourself. Am I being cautious in what I'm doing? Am I being careful? Am I being What she's saying sound like in her channel, so put it in a shop at all. So you hear what Mary is saying. Mary says that even if what they what they are looking for outside is in the inside. They will yeah. still go outside to go and eat mama put, to go and eat, yeah. to go and eat it's out there. It's in their genes to, to, to do such evil or whatever they practice. Amen. Amen. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you do. Now, that's just a man there ain't happy at home. I, I don't know. But like I say, yeah, you got a little bit of everything at home. That man ain't going to have too much go out looking. have something in the house and it does not turn them on anymore why let's discuss that and how do we make somebody eat the same food enjoy because you see uh, you see god did not give us each other just to have an experience he gave us each other to stay and build a life together so it is dependent on that man and on that woman to build the fire all the time to try out different things that make their life worth enjoying, you know? So why are they going to try the different thing with somebody out there instead of trying nice, beautiful thing with each other in the house? Because of a weakness that somehow or another snuck in on his behalf. He became weak to something out there. He became weak. It's not, well, it, I, it's not doing I think that is what we call that is what we call wickedness. If that man is doing everything that he should do to spark the fire, and that woman is doing everything. Yeah, and that woman back to what I was saying earlier. And when jealousy comes in, that man is uh, the evil steps in, and as a 
women or do things to, you know, more seductive to, to, to where she's practicing it. Okay, let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys this question. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let Louis speak. Let Louis speak. Louis, Louis speak. Louis speak. Speak, speak. I'm listening. We are all listening to you, Louis. Yes. I was just saying happiness is one of the most beautiful things in the world. But when you lose happiness, you don't have nothing. Okay. Is happiness supposed to be in the house? Or is happiness supposed to be in the outside? I don't buy the theory of somebody being weak. I do not buy that. I have a question. Okay, what's the question? Are we talk are we talking about uh are we talking about a godly saved relationship? Or are we talking about uh people are not necessarily saved, just they're in a relationship? Whether they are saved or whether they are not saved, whether they are godly or they are not godly, it doesn't matter. It is a relationship, it's a relationship. Relationship is a relationship. That's what we are talking about because I find that offensive that is because of weakness that somebody goes out there to go and bring AIDS and come and give to you. To go and bring disease and come and give to you. The reason why I ask because if you, I'm just asking, because if you're in, a, uh, in your spiritual relationship with your God-ordained person, your boyfriend, your husband, whoever, Aren't you both trying to do the right thing and stay together? If you're not, then you tend to look at other women because if you're with your person, you're you're supposed to be looking to yeah. each other. Now, but if you're not and you living with what's going on out here, then you're you're subject to be looking around, looking at other women and doing other things. So okay. what are we now? What are Please, please, one person at a time. When one person is speaking, the other person should be quiet. When this person finishes, then you can speak. Continue. Please, who is pressing your phone? Please do not press your phone. Leave your phone alone. Somebody should continue. Who is talking, please? Let me say this to you. Uh, if a man has a character flaw, a woman has a character flaw, you do not need to be in a relationship with that person. If a person has sexual weakness, you should never be in a relationship with that person. I'm, I'm very serious here. Because that's part of being sensitive before entering into a marriage. You must be sensitive. <laughs> 
you must be sensitive. Excuse me. You must be sensitive in how does that man manages money when that man has money? Because having money and material resources is what you use to develop a family so that you can have a kingdom of your own on the earth. That's how God deals with money and material resources. It will, it's for the individual to use it to develop. It's not for you to go and chase. It's not for you to use it to go and start chasing women and women chasing men. That's not why money and material resources is given. Another question is another question here is this. Okay. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, uh Jemaina. This is the question. The question is this. Are you giving enough compliments to your man? That's number one. See, there are women who come into a relationship and they want the man to take care of them. The man compliment them, the man massage them. The man bed them, the man spoil on them. There are women who come into a relationship looking for that. But they cannot give that man no message. They buy him no gift. They don't do anything for that man. That man can give and give and give until he bends out. The same thing with a woman. If they, they have seen women who are the breadwinner, they've given of their sex. They've given of their sweetness. They gave him children. They buy him car. They gave to the to the to the husband's family. They give and give and give. They are the one raising the children. They've given and given until they have nothing else to give, and then they're bent out, and the marriage die out because the other person is insensitive. I know of women who who never give one compliment to their husband. Because they were not brought out that way. But they expect the husband to give them compliment. So if the husband goes out there and get compliment, who are you to who are you to blame? And I've seen women, the husband is not used to giving compliment. Darling, you are beautiful. I like this new hair. I love the way that your nail now is, is um, white and sparkling blue or gold. They never give. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me finish. Excuse me. I'm talking about whole. When your relationship as a whole, the woman and the man was once so bubbly like champagne. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying. You see, I know of men. Who cannot even give money? Talk less of going with their wife to go and get their nails done or get their hair done. It's too much. Just to spend $200 to get their hair styled or braided, get their nails manicure, pedicure made, is such a big thing. I know people like that. Your husband went and get a hair, a hair cut, no compliment. Your husband wants to go and get new clothing. You don't go with him to choose. You should be the one that should be dressing up your man. That's how it should be. And the man should be the one there to tell the wife, you look cute for me. You look pretty. You are a queen for me. And there are people who do not do that. And so this woman is getting compliment from outside. This man is getting compliment from outside. Who do you blame? Because let me tell you, women who come into relationship looking for somebody to take care of them only, they don't contribute anything. They've never had a job for one day. I have seen it. I've been there. I've had that experience myself. I have been with somebody who comes in for me to take care of her. I've been there. And I know the pain that I have to go through. Seriously. So I'm speaking from experience. And they don't care. And I know of men who a woman is the one taking care 
picking up the tabs. And they, do, they are very insensitive. So let's face it. Because let me tell you, a real man, a real man will not have character flaws. A real man will stand by his wife. Everything, just like Louis says, everything, like, like uh, Mary says, everything he needs should be in that woman. And it goes back to my teaching. And this is what I teach, which heaven told me. If you are a woman and you are planning to get married, stop praying for your husband. Stop praying for the following things. I've got to give you a man who has money. That's the number one thing. I did not stand by asking you to pray for somebody who is born again and spirit filled. I don't stand from there. I've been there before. They will kill you quicker than you think while they are still prophesying in the church and speaking in tongues. They will kill you. I'm serious. So don't start with that. Don't start with that. Start with God give me a wealthy person. That's number one. So that if your job fails, he will still continue to run the family with you. And not somebody who you're broke, he's broke. I don't want that. That's, right. That's not Bible-based marriage. That's why I do not allow two poor people to get married. I don't allow it. Two broke people, yeah, two broke people, I don't wait. I do not wait two broke people. That's right. I do not. Amen. And let me tell you, if you come for me to conduct your wedding, you are coming for trouble or you're coming for blessing. Because you see, where pastor says, whatever God has joined together, let nobody put us under. I don't say that. Where pastor says, uh, you are marrying for richer or for poorer or for this. I sang that song to Mary. I say, I say, God forbid, oh, not to fear, kwa, oh. <laughs> yes, oh. Yes. You know, we, the, the, the pastors will read out to you. Yeah, this is how we normally read it. We will say, will you... Will you, uh, will you, Berlin, take this man? Or will you, Ladry, or Lazy, or Patsy, or Mary, will you take this man to be your one and only husband legally for richer or for poorer, for sickness or for health? Da 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 to get. I don't read those things because that is not how God bless people. God said, be blessed, be fruitful. Multiply, have dominion, subdue, etc., etc. Rule. That's how I bless them. Then, when I finish blessing them, before I put the ring on them, on each of them, I ask them to exchange ring. You know what I do? This is what I do. I bring the Bible and open to a very violent part of the Bible. Which part do you open? <laughs> you want me to tell you here so that. I don't want to tell you so that you don't go and start killing people. I'm not going to do that. Man. Yeah, there is a violent part of the Bible that when I recite it against anybody, they will not wake up the following morning. I'm serious. They will not be able to wake up. Who is on the line here? So you know what I do? I will open, I will open that part of the scripture. Who is on the line here? Yes, we are on a conference. Call me later, Sherry. Bye-bye. Okay. What I do is, I will go and pick the Bible. And I'll bring it to two of them. I'll ask one of the deacon to bring a Bible. And they will bring a Bible. Under the Bible is a red outfit. And I'll place the Bible on it. The red outfit represents the Holy Ghost. And I will open the Bible to somewhere in Deuteronomy. Very, very dangerous part of the Bible. Hey! And I will ask the deacon, the deacon to read. I will ask one deacon to read the blessing. And I will add another deacon. Please, somebody should turn your phone off. I don't want that echo. Hallelujah. 
I will ask another deacon. Somebody needs to mute their phone while he's talking. Please, you should know. You should know that it's your phone that has the echo. All of us, you should, if you are listening, you should know. Okay, so I will ask one deacon to read the blessing, and the person will read the blessing, and I will ask another deacon to read the curses, and they will start reading the curses. And I will say to the man, listen, look at me, eyeball to eyeballs. And the person will look at me, look at this woman. I said, before you came for me to wait both of you, I gave you one year. Normally, I give people one year. Go and sex all the women you want before you come and stay with this one woman. I'm serious. I'm very, I'm very practical. If you are a playboy, go and play. Play until you are, you are, when you are tired, you want to settle down so that you are not going to play no more. So the place of weakness does not arise. Anybody who try weakness, if I wait you, you try to use weakness, you see what I say. I will tell you, I gave you some months. I gave you a whole year. You say, no, you guys want to marry immediately. And I gave you six months. You say, no. You say you want it in one month. And I warn you ahead of time. And that is why I'm doing this now. Yeah. If you leave this woman and you take your organ, and put in a different woman from this from this woman, you will die on top of that woman where you go. I'm serious. And you woman, if you carry this holy sweet thing, this sweet sugar honey God has put in you, and you carry it to go and give to another sucker out there, another idiot, in the name of anything, you will die there in that place. You will not come back to this man. Are you, are you guys ready for it? They say yes. Then I say, go ahead. And I can assure you, they've never been a couple that have waited and I pronounce the blessing. They are millionaires. Seriously, God is my witness. The one that have tried to violate what I said during that wedding, they've all died. I'm serious. They've all perished. Yep, they've all perished. So there is no place for witness. Don't even try it. If you are not ready to be sleeping with this woman day in, day out, because let me tell you, sex, according to what heaven told me, I've told all of you already in my previous videos, sex is a celebration and a, a deepening of a love that is already there. A love that is going to be there continuously. So if, that, if sex is not going to be a deepening, to deepen it, to make it deeper, to celebrate the Lord that is there, day in, day out. Don't even try to even get married. Because the curse I will pronounce will kill you. And I'm serious. It will kill, it will destroy you. You won't be able to make it. Where you go, where you go to go and eat, in another woman's house, you will die in that place. You will not return back to this woman. There you go. Berlin knows. I've written it out. Type it out. That's how our that's how our wedding things protocol. That's how our wedding protocol is. Seriously, that is how it is. Go and try it. Go and tell me that it is weakness. Let me catch you doing weakness. I won't be there, but my spirit from that moment that I make the pronunciation of the blessing and the curse, my spirit begin to follow you too, and the Holy Ghost begin to follow you too. Go and play nonsense with your secretary. Or with a boyfriend that you already left. Why didn't you go and marry? You have your father and mother are now coming into the marriage to come and tell you what to do. Why don't you go and marry your mother? Yeah. Or if you're a girl, why don't you go and marry your father or your siblings your and your sisters? Why, 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 why don't you go and marry them? <laughs> if that boyfriend was good enough, why are you not marrying that boyfriend? Why is he coming back? Or if that girlfriend is the is the best thing that ever happened to you? You are now you have the audacity to tell your wife that girlfriend was the best thing that happened to me. Oh, when that girl make love to me, oh, I lost my senses. Why didn't you marry her? And you choose this one. And after marrying, you want to go back to that? No, no, no. You cannot go back. When you cross the Jordan with me, you are done. So the place of weakness does not arrive here. 
Because it is the more you stay with the woman, the more you sex the woman, the more the woman sex heaven into you, the sweeter, the deeper the love grows. So there's nothing like some other woman has has a better sex out there, or has a better vagina, or a man has a better penis, a bigger one out there. No, there's nothing like that. I don't buy that. Or you are telling me, oh, the man's penis is small. You did, did you not know that he has a small penis before you married him? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you are telling me the woman, the woman, listen. No, no, listen. Some men will say, some men will say, the woman doesn't know how to ride. She's just laying there like a wood. Did you not know? Did you not know that she comes from a culture where women don't ride men like a horse? That what the women do is they lay there and please you. It's a duty. Sex is a duty for some culture. And you are now, she doesn't know how to. She cannot eat me. She cannot play with me. She just lay there. Did you not know it before you started? She doesn't know how to ride a man. Really? Are you a cow or a bull or a horse that she should ride? God forgive you. But, but this is the thing that church folk do not want to talk about. Pastors don't want to talk about those things. They get you married. Pastors get you married and let you go and suffer. They tell you to do things. They tell you to do things that they themselves cannot do. And I know it. I'm a pastor myself. I've been among pastors all my life. You are complaining about your wife. She doesn't know how to move that hips. Oh, you, you didn't know that? You didn't know that? You, she had to do some kind of moving in order to get it. Oh. oh. <laughs> go, go. I will call, I will call, I will call my partners. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. If we want to have kids, otherwise we can't. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Let me tell you something. If you want to spark up your love life, I can, I can call, please, please listen. I can call my friends, my partners from India, and they will send me the, is it the Kama Sutra or whatever they call that book, that shows you yeah. the different ways of enjoying a, and deepening your relationship okay. in the bed. And I will send a copy to you. There's nothing wrong about that so that you can spice this thing up. We need this thing to be, I, I want your sex life to catch fire. That's right. They got that now, Pastor. Good. Please, please. Spice up your, your love life. Right. Please let, let me let me say this. Who is that disturbing us with all this phone thing? Pressing your phone. Please watch your phone because you are pressing your phone. It's disturbing us. Uh, please let, let me say this. What 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 are we supposed to do when you begin to see that your partner is slipping away? Is running away. Love is running away. All the things we have said. What are you supposed to do? He doesn't acknowledge your anniversary. He doesn't hold your hands anymore. Doesn't want to go anywhere with you. Just doesn't want to do anything with you. Move away to a different bedroom. All the things that we've been saying. How do you handle this while the person is still there with you? Please, somebody else. Let new people talk. Let new people talk. Let new people talk. Other people should talk. All those who've been talking, please be quiet. Let other people please say have a voice here. Right, we heard that. Yeah, we, we've heard that. I want some other people to speak. Please, if you've not spoken, give us some idea. How do you behave? Do you start quarreling? If the person is no longer communicating with you, do you also stop communicating with the person? Like Maliha said yesterday. Maliha, are you on tonight? Okay. Maliha said yesterday that some people are looking for opportunity to go and cheat. So do not give them that opportunity to go and cheat outside and say that it's because there is no spice. They are looking for new, new, new. You cannot eat burger every day. You have to eat pizza. No, no way. You are not going to eat no pizza. You are going to eat burgers only. Come come on, let's go. What 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 do you guys think we should do when love, you, you, you sense that love is running away? I need some, I need other people. Please, those who have not spoken, please can you speak?
Victoria, what do you want us to do? Berlin, where are you tonight? Okay, how do you bring how do you how do you break the leg of the love so that it doesn't run away? What what are your plans? Please, people of God, tell me what are your plans. If love is slipping away, what is the plan you have? Or ask us question. Ask us question. How do I stop love from running away? Or if love ran away from you some years back, can you share with us? How you dealt with that process when you sensed it was going away? What did you do? Either your mistake or the best thing you did. Please share with us. We need to hear your experience. I started back loving No, no, no. No, no. Victoria is on. Victoria is on. Victoria, we need to hear from you. You are not innocent. You are not innocent. You are not a holy virgin Victoria. <laughs> okay. Share your experience with us. People of God, if you guys did not know, Victoria loves this pa this pastor. She does. So I'm now making it public so that let her innocence it dies. Now talk. Um, what's the question? Okay, you guys see, the question is, what are your experiences when you were with a love that was slipping away in the past or in the present? How did you handle it? What do you do? Well, what to do when love is running away? Tell us. Well, um, I think love is running away in a relationship that I'm in right now. And um, I'm barely realizing this. And I'm trying to um, think of ways that I can try to prevent it. If, if, uh, maybe things I could do on my part that may help. What do you want to do on your part? On my part? relationship it do, do that relationship has I know that there is a child involved yeah but is that relationship legal is it legal by law exactly no it's there not. you go so that's why, there you that's go why, what do you do what do you do to make the relationship legal what is it that you expect him to do to make the relationship legal so that you can okay. now come out to play your part There you go. Um, like uh, before, I could even because like if you're not if you're living if you are living with someone who hasn't sent a legal paperwork of divorce or something, then then nothing good's gonna happen for him and yep. for me too. Yep. So, and so I'm just barely realizing this, and it's been a ten year relationship, and I never I don't know why I never thought that it was something that was causing that was so important you know but i do know that um i do i do know that like like i always i okay i think that like i really want to okay like sleeping together if you're not it's okay i understand Continue, Victoria. Okay. Okay, if you're not, if you're not married, you don't, like me, you don't really feel like, like going for it all the way because you kind of just like hold back because you don't feel like. Okay, there is no future 
you are in a relationship in which you don't believe that there is a genuine future because there is no foundation. Am I right? Yes. There you go. So because of it, you cannot give your entire spirit, mind, and yes. body into it. So like, I really don't feel like being intimate at all, because, and so that's just like, kind of separates us. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Victoria, that's enough. Next person, Leo, now help us here, help us, my lady, help us. Yeah, we put the fire away and we're talking about it. 
going on with drugs and um, oh. some other things. Yes, but that I don't want to get at it. But something was going on that was a uh, form or uh, a deviancy. Okay. Yes. So, uh, All right. Now, the, who again has um, something to tell us how you handled? When you discovered that love was going away, you decided to um, how you handle it so that it did not go out of hand or it did get out of hand. Because don't tell me that you will see uh, somebody you love neglect you, the different signs is showing up that all you did was you were just quiet. There was no reaction from you. You didn't take no action. You didn't say nothing. You just waited for that person to get away. Now, what did you do? What did you say? And it's not just to protect the relationship or the marriage. What did you do to protect yourself? That's the most important question. What did you do to protect your mind during that point in, in time? When you saw the neglect, the disconnect, according to Peter yesterday, when you saw the rejection, when you saw the failure and disappointments from the other person, what did you do to protect your mind? Or did you just allow your mind just to be open and get wounded? What did you do? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and find out what's going on. You know, it, it, it can come from a lot of reasons. Sometimes, just like she said, drugs can even be involved. It don't have to be another woman, but I'm going to find out myself. Yep. Thank and you. I would know how to go from there. Okay. Thank you. me, you and drugs ain't going to get along. There you go. Who is the next person? Next person, please speak up. Yeah, this is Berlin. Okay. So, so what I did uh, in my last relationship when I noticed that... Uh, some of the time, okay. I did. I started exercising. I started going to the gym more, and also I started um, doing some of the things that I like, something that I love. You've been going to the gym recently, am I right? Yes, I was. <laughs> even even if you didn't tell me, the Holy Ghost told me you've been going to the gym recently. That's how you know that I'm following you. Yep. Continue, continue, darling, continue. Mm -hmm. So, and also, um, you know, I start doing things that I like, you know, going to places like shopping, you know, try to keep myself busy, yeah. you know, doing things that I like. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's how she started, <laughs> she started preparing herself in case things did not work out. Because this is a woman who gave of everything and even the man when the man wasn't working this girl was doing three or four different jobs to run that family and I know women who do this kind of thing and still their love was rejected so that's what she did the most important thing to me is not really necessarily the protection of the marriage to make the marriage work. That's one aspect. But the other aspect is the protection of your own mind. How did you protect your mind? And she's telling us what she did. She started exercising. Because she concentrated all her love in this man. But now that she sees that her love was rejected, she now began to think of other ways to make herself happy. Remember that personal happiness is the reason why God brought us here. If you are happy, if you are happy, then you can you will be able to make God happy. If you are not happy, no matter how you pretend, even God will not look at you. So how did you protect yourself? How did you make yourself happy? When you saw that that person neglected you, how did you make yourself happy? What did you do? That person, you realize that that person is not going to protect you, prosper you, or promote you. 
How did you prosper yourself? How did you protect yourself? How did you promote yourself when you saw that that love was running away? is one part of it that's one part of it but we are we are also talking about the earth here thank you Lois other people please contribute to this I need others to talk please In, let's kick in one thing. If you do not love yourself, you cannot even love the other person. That's the point. Yeah. Let's kick it in here. Marriage will not work if you don't even love yourself. Right. So let's face it. Next person, is there somebody else? If not, we well, will begin. Uh -huh. I, I will only say one thing for Jimmy and the everybody. Sounds like they're doing real good. My fault was that I did not protect myself and I allowed that person to trample me. And yes. until I shook and you prayed, and then I had a, a, a confirmation of what was told to leave him alone and stay away. Well, once I fully did that, it wasn't until then that now I understand. Now I trust God, but it was stepping, believing that the best thing I have was God, and that's not true. Whenever a person doesn't love you anymore, and they're treating you bad, or they're insensitive to you, and you, then you're just beating yourself up and destroying your mind, your heart, and the people around you. Okay. And I think that you must love yourself enough to say, you know what? Enough, enough, you go, and me and 
this number one thing if the person is brutal if the person is abusive molesting if suddenly you discovered the evil side of that person you have to protect your yourself you have to protect your mind if not if you break down it might take a long time for you to recover in this lifetime it might take a long a long Yes, you won't be able to handle your professional job. You won't be able to accept yourself back. You'll be living in guilt and shame throughout your lifetime. And you'll start hearing voices. The spirit of death and dumb will project demons into you. Because the devil is waiting for one bad experience in your life. And everything goes against you. So listen carefully. Number one, accept yourself. Accept yourself. Recover everything that used to make you happy. Number two, put your own personal happiness ahead of everybody else. Because you've tried to make the other person happy, they didn't accept it. Then put your happiness ahead of everybody else. Do not live for the other person anymore. Next thing. Next thing. Listen carefully. Next thing. Find everything that will make you happy. Everything good. Listen to the word. Find everything good that will make you happy and keep your mind focused on your creativity and your professional life and job and family life. Next thing you have to do, recover your voice. Recover your voice. So that if you need to speak, you speak boldly and clearly. Please, whoever is playing that music, turn it off. Please. We are talking of important thing here. Somebody is playing some music. Recover your voice. Don't speak behind the person's back. Be bold like a lion. Recover your voice. Next thing. Recover your place. Because many of you, you become angry and walk away from the marriage. And you take nothing with you. And leave the idiot with everything else. And another woman come to enjoy it. Make sure that you get half of the property. Because many of you get angry and walk away. Some of you will take your children and run away. And the man will be taking care of other people's children. Another woman's children. And not yours. Legally. Legally. Get child support. If they are minor children. And even if the adult children. Let the house be sold. And the money be shared equally. Don't live without money, material resources. If you are a woman, demand for alimony. If you are not working, demand for alimony. And even if you are working, depending on your state, how it is. I'm being serious with you. Next thing, do not allow that person and his family to ever trample you down. Trample them down too. Put them under your feet. Jesus said, I've given you authority to trample on scorpions and snake. So turn that, let, look, look at that person as scorpion and snake and put them where they belong. Don't allow them to put you in their pit. Put them before they put you. Okay. Are you putting down, Bishop? You do the boom boom shot or what? Listen, listen, listen. I'm not here to explain how those things are done. Anybody, <laughs> anybody who doesn't know how to, how to deal with with evil people, consult me. I'm a professional at dealing with it. If you don't know how to deal with a wicked husband, a wicked wife, consult me. I'm a professional. I'll tell you what to do. And he will run away from that house the next day. There's a woman from Liberia. The husband has been trying. Please listen carefully. There's a woman from Liberia. The husband has been trying to kill her. 
So this is what happened. The wife called me, told me the story. I went and consulted the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost confirmed that the man wants to kill the woman. That he has guns planted in several places in the house. He's waiting for an opportunity to shoot her and behave like it was somebody else. So the woman told me, I want you to pray him out. I said, I've consulted the Holy Spirit, I already know. I told her, give me three days. I went and did, when I'm provoked, it takes it takes 24 hours. In fact, it's not even up to 24 hours, the person will flee from you. I went into my room, came out, went to my altar and bring out the things, the instrument of destruction and place on the altar and then call on the man's name. And that's all I did. I didn't even pray, I just call on his name and I asked the weapon to arise and go down to Atlanta, Georgia. And the thing left and went to Atlanta, Georgia. Six o'clock the following morning, the man was packing his thing into his luggage and left the house. What till today he had not come back. It's my sister. It's from Liberia. She's been with me for many years. She called me and told me what has been happening. When the man left that day, that woman recovered many guns in the house. The man by law is not allowed to have guns. But there were guns everywhere. Oh my God. Yep. Six o'clock early the next morning when I did what I did. I did what I did at 12 midnight central time. Six o'clock, the man was running, packing his thing like somebody that something was pursuing. Packed his thing, put in luggage, brought a, a, a U-Haul. Quickly, he brought a U-Haul early in the morning, packed his things and left up till today. The woman now is in charge of the house and everything. So let's face it. You get me provoke, it's on. Bring it on. It's on. There is the other side that I myself is even afraid of it. Okay, Mary. That's not me. Oh That's the other side of me. That's not really me. I stand back to watch that side. I'm like two different people. I'm standing and I'm watching. The game as he's on. The man fled for his life. It wasn't even up to 24 hours. Because I told the woman, in three days, something's going to happen. It wasn't up to that. You guys remember the story of the woman from Canada? The mother-in-law came and stayed in their home for nine, nine years. And swore. And swore. Swore that that, woman, that lady is going to leave her son. And that lady has many children for this man. I told the woman, send me a thousand dollar offering. Send me a thousand dollar offering. And she did. So like, give me seven days. 24 hours later, the woman, the mother-in-law was in the hospital. From the hospital, she came. She was now working on her cane. Following day, the son was hurrying, packing her thing, throwing it into a container. Bam! They flew her back to Nigeria. She's not come back until today. I told the daughter-in-law, if she ever even think of coming back, she would die in Nigeria. Let me tell you, witches knows who I am. If you don't know it, they know me. This is not a joke. This is serious. The woman. You should not scare me like that. Oh well, that's the that's <laughs> that's that's how this thing works. So listen, that I woman, know. that woman has not tried to come back, and then they and then they, when the woman now ran back to her country, yeah. My partner now called me and said, "Now I want you to." to give me the heart of my husband. I said, you want it? Can you handle it? If I give your husband a love portion, can you handle it? She said, yes. So I sat her down and told her what to do. And I did what I did for her. And now after that, she's not called me. Last time she called me, she told me, love is sweet, oh! Love is very sweet. <laughs> love is sweet, oh! I said, okay, bye. Go and enjoy your man. You guys go and do your thing. I'm not interested. And she's out there. She's last time she called me and said, "When you are going to have another conference in the in the US, please write, call me and tell me because I'm coming with my friends." She came to the one in Las Vegas. So we are coming this year again, all the way from 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 Canada. She called me, "Love is sweet, oh." Now she has the heart of her husband. In those days, the mother-in-law had the heart of the husband. 
Whatever the mother-in-law tell the husband to do, that's what the husband does. Husband slap the hell out of this girl, and the husband will slap her back, back. Nowadays, she's in charge of the money. She's in charge of the husband. I say rock. La, la. La, 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 la. Rock your baby. Pa, da, da, pam, pam, pam. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> La 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 la, rock your baby. Pa da pam 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 pam, pa da pam pam. <laughs> rock the boat, da dam pa dam pam pam. Rock the boat, tan ta dam ta ta. Rock. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Tell me. All you need to do is call me, pay me. I'll put the love portion on them. They will never get out of it till they die. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Call me. It's private. It's private. I will put the BLP on them. Big love portion on them. Big time. Only if he's a rich man. Yeah. Only if he's a rich man because I'm not putting no love portion on a broke, a broke man. I'm not putting no love portion on a broke man for you to go and be taking care of another man. Are you serious? Be taking care of a broke man. This love portion is based on the Bible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever it is, it seems to be working. Oh, he's working big time. He's working. He's working. He's working. That's why when Malia, when, when, when Malia was crying, I, when I get married, I say, you don't even know who you are dealing with. You are crying. When I get married, all these women, when they call me, they when I get married, I just look at them and say, Ooh, if you only know. When you are ready, you, you come, you talk to me, pay me. I will send the well, right man, but... Tell yeah? I spoke with him, and I told him some of my problems, and I told him I wanted my sexy back, and within two days, and every since, every since, I've been feeling brand new. Yep. I told you guys, yep. a man, I'm going to get my hair done. Yep. I'm walking better. Yep. I'm doing a lot. It's like. I'm sexy and I know it. Pam, 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 pam. I'm sexy and I know it. Put it on, pam, put it on, pam. I'm sexy and I know it. I'm sexy and I know it. I'm sexy and I know it. I'm losing hair, Bishop. Yep. So when any of you, when I get married, come and get me paid. Then if you're already married, and you want to stay with that man because he has money, you don't want other women to be getting him, just come and pay me, and I will give you the BLP, Big Love Passion. Yep. When you put it, let me tell you, let me tell you, when we put the BLP on your man, and if you're a man on their woman, when that woman look at other men, she will see your face. When, if you are a man, you look at other people, you see the face of your wife. Seriously. There we go. Uh, that's what's up, Bishop. That's yep. what I want. I'm sexy and I know it. <laughs> if he sees another woman, I don't want it to come up. I want it to go down. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I'm sexy well, and I know it. There you go. When he look at the dollar bill, he sees your face. There you go. Yep. I want that. Yep. I want that too. Yep. He your money. He made good money. And when, when he called his secretary, in those days, when he called his secretary, he called his secretary by her name. Hello, Magdalene. Magdalene, please, can you pick that phone? And then when we pick, when we put the BLP on him, Instead of him calling Magda, he will be calling his wife in the in place of the secretary. Hello, Mary. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Magdalene. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 um, jo 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 Joyce. Yeah, I'm sexy and I know it. I have power. I have power. I have power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. 
There is power in the blood of the people of God. Remember what I've said tonight, what we've discovered, what we've discussed. Make sure that you recover your voice because there are many women, especially women, I'm not talking of men. There are many women who are in relationship in which they've been beaten so much that they've lost their voice, they've lost their place, they've lost their focus, they've lost their past, present, and future, and they are all battered, traumatized, and they have nothing. Please, I'm begging you, I'm begging you tonight, if you are in this kind of situation, you need to make contact with me because I'm going to get you out of it, one way or the other. So this is where... Yeah. Yep. 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 So call me 316-665-4400. Make contact with us at thekaimeriministry.com. And this is where we are bringing it to an end. Is there anybody with a question? Tomorrow we will be dealing with what to do when love finally left you. When love finally left you. How do you deal with it? That is tomorrow night. How do you deal with love that finally left you? Let me look at the time here. Uh, this is 10 o'clock. People of God, I want to share something with you really quickly. At 12 o'clock midnight, that's 12 o'clock central time, which is 1 o'clock in the East Coast, I'll be having a Holy Ghost prophetic uh, conference tonight. At 1 o'clock Eastern time, 12 o'clock for those of us in Central Time. I'll be having, there will be prophecy. Please, only those who are awake should come. If you are sleepy, please don't come. Please, it is to, tonight. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm yeah. awake. Yeah, so 12 midnight Central, 12 midnight Central, 1 a.m. in the morning. For those in the East Coast, if you are still awake, join me because I will be doing uh, a Holy Ghost prophetic generation with prophecies happening tonight, uh, so that people can watch. Now, let me tell you what we've just, what we did yesterday, and to do two videos we've done tonight. They are not on YouTube. They are not. They are gonna be edited, worked on, and they will be put out. Uh, they, they will be put out with a book. So tomorrow we will round this up. What to do when you are, when love finally left? What do you do? So I'm gonna put some, uh, some things principles on the ground that you are going to follow. Please do not, I know that you are going to be angry when you begin to see yourself neglected, when you see yourself abused mentally or physically. I know that you will feel bad and sometimes it will bring out the aggressive personality in you. There's nothing wrong about that. I'm just, there's nothing wrong about that. I am not advocating that when a man starts slapping you, that you should be quiet. Call the law. That's what the law is meant for. Put him away in jail for a very long time. If he broke your teeth, well, he need to go to prison for that. If he slaps you, he need to go to prison for that. If he, if he tries to kill you or plan for you to die, make sure you have evidence to put him away forever before he kills you. Before he gets you hurt, make sure that they put him away because there are people who are so aggressive that you didn't know and when when you talk back to them about what they are doing against you they want to kill you please if your husband or your ex has told you that they want to kill you please call me and let me know 316-665-4400 we will deal it we will deal with it with the law and we will also handle it with the law of heaven. I want to, I want to, um, I'll be seeing you for those of you who will be awake at 12 midnight central, one o'clock oh. Eastern. Please thank you very much for joining me during these three sessions. And God Almighty, fill you with this new power. Amen. What? Which song? Which one? Ah, yes, yes. Hurt them before they hurt you. Hurt them before they hurt you. Yep. There you go. Well, thank God. Well, Jemaina has recovered back her mojo. That's why she's now bold to talk. When she... <laughs> 
Now don't tell Jemaina, don't tell them how much you pay me. Let them call me, you know. <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. I'll see you. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight and tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>